ask you another question. Sure. I know I brought this up before about um, the fire vehicles being classified as commercial vehicles. I know for uh, bus and truck operators, they have to report the number of hours they work at a different right. job. Otherwise, you go over that. Do our fire engineers have to follow that same report? That doesn't fall no. into the same report. Okay. Um, one other thing that you know that uh, I think that it's important that we know about other jobs, whether or not you keep the part about disciplining them or not, is that <clears throat> the operators here are required to be on call. So you're on call, depending on how many operators we end up with, you're on call either every other week, right. every third, fourth week. So if you do have another job, you can't be on call and be working another job. Well, right. you can't if you're within five, no, because 30 you minutes away. another job to come here. So if you're if you're working at Jack in a Box or something to make ends meet, okay, they're not going to let you leave Jack in a Box to come here because you got a call. That's conflict. That's a very valid point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in yeah. that respect, we do need to know if they have another job. I I don't necessarily agree with firing somebody because they're trying to get another job, but they well, at the same time no, and it's say, not in there for that intent. The way it's written, you the way it's written addresses the you know the notification. I think the fact that it's not so, I guess you know, asking for all these conditional things that I think it, it, I think it would encourage people to disclose employment outside of the district. And if, if somebody, if we follow this and you say, okay, I submit a letter to Rob saying, hey, you know, I have my, I have another job. It doesn't really conflict with this. This is what I do. This is the hours I generally work. And then if you, if he says, no, you can't do that because it conflicts with directly with your job. Then he has it in writing, yeah. and if I do it anyway, and something happens, then the district's more protected that way. Yeah. Then we don't have anything, and you know, there's no requirement to have anything in document or well, document. My only my only concern with that is if if you're putting it in the hands of somebody to predetermine whether it's going to be a conflict or not a conflict. In, in my in my opinion, uh, I would would prefer to see it <laughs> in in such a manner that. Rather than asking permission, if it were less draconian and the employees were encouraged to be honest about having another job or seeking another job, it would then fall to whether it is in fact a conflict. Is it now becoming a problem where you aren't on time for shifts, you aren't performing your job to the responsibilities that are required, you, you're you have to deal for a call out. You can't, you're not showing up because you're still at another job. You're now demonstrating the conflict is in fact Right. So rather than is, is our general is our interim general manager conflicted like as we speak? Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Well, I think I think it, there needs but to be some. But we accepted his letter. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Explaining to us. You know, I'm going to do this from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny where I'm. No, I just you know, I, it, and it, it has the requirement. It has the requirement in writing. You know that outside employee will be, employment will be disclosed to the to the district to the general manager. And then, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I read this and I think if I had a chance to get some, you know, side job somewhere else, would I want to tell them this necessarily? If they're going to, what if they say, what if they deem it isn't a conflict or it is a conflict? I don't know. I, don't know. I agree that it probably could be worded better so that it's less. Draconian. Yeah, it's less. You know, they don't want, I, we don't I, want to I, prevent people from telling us. If, if you guys want to, if you guys want to have a requirement to read it for resubmittal, I, I would just ask that the last that any violations of this section be removed. I would, I would say, grounds for disciplinary action. If you want to take out including dismissal. Yeah, I don't think we would have a good ground to fire somebody if they didn't tell us, unless something else. Happened. Well, I don't either. But and it didn't sound. It, sound, it sounds kind of threatening, I guess, but. I mean, you know, I, I look at these things. If you're a good employee, you don't have to worry about personnel policy. <clears throat> yeah. You, know, you can put anything you want in here, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't what be a problem. If you're a good employee, it shouldn't be a problem. Well, that's true, but I mean, we also want a policy that's welcoming to these people. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't see <laughs> this as. I mean. If you're already working somewhere mm -hmm. and you're accepting this obligation, then there should be a conversation, shouldn't there? I, I would think so. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you're going to document that conversation so that everybody's on the same page. Because if you are working 
the graveyard shift at Jack in the Box, and you're one of two people yeah. there, and you get a call out. You're not going to exactly want to jump on a John Deere at it, 7 in the morning. Yeah. Well, not just that, but if you run out of Jack in the Box, guess what? They're going to take disciplinary action against oh, yeah. you, up to and including dismissal. But right. you're taking that risk on by working there because this job is obviously more important than working in Jack. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> working graveyard at Jack in the Box. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So what if you go out and get a job that's better than this one? I mean, how do you define what's better? In this industry, I mean, it's pretty you normal go, to use this could go jobs. nine ways. All this is supposed to do is, is to inform the district that yeah. hey, this is what I'm doing, and if you don't play by the rules, guess what? We're going to discipline you. And if it turns into something egregious, you're probably going to get fired. Doesn't mean you're going to. It's not a guarantee that you're going to get dismissed. It's just, it's... I mean, would you guys feel better if we change this out to May? Any violations of the section may constitute grounds for disciplinary action? Is that based on a requirement that discipline will be implemented? I, yeah, I, I mean, without... without the loom of disciplinary action, then you have nothing. You can you can write you can write a policy manual ten times thicker than this, and if there's no discipline, there's no consequences, then it's a free for all. No, I just don't think this is the hill you want to choose. To no, I, I agree with that too. As far as discipline goes, I agree with that too. I think that the wording is a standard verbiage. That's all right, what it comes down to. Um, I have one also question regarding this. Sure, go ahead. Um, <laughs> what, another job is anything that we would make income that's defined, right? So if one of us did like, uh, every Saturday I decide to go drive my car for Uber, that can serve, that's still considered as a job, right? Sure, so they're clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to make sure it's not like, you know, it's damn typical of the hour job or anything else we're defining. But if you're on call, mm -hmm. then you can't be accepting I can be taking Uber drives at, at 2 a.m. with a sewer. Well, you know, I mean, that's you're, an example if you're of something on that's call, flexible. You have to be within shift work. Right. You know? Yeah. If I mean, you're on call, you have to be within 30 minutes of the district. Mm -hmm. And if somebody calls you as an Uber and they want to go to Grover Beach, you can't forget it. <laughs> but you're no longer available. Yes. I mean, I know at my job, I mean, if, you know, essentially, you know, th this is the way it is at my work, is the way I have it written here. and. You know, if I were to say, hey, I'm going to go get a job on my off weeks or, or the shifts where I'm not working, I'm going to go get a job at Jack in the Box, my boss would say, the hell you are. <laughs> I mean, straight up. It would be like, no, you're not, because that's, that's an obvious conflict, because we don't want a zombie walking around here, you know, treating water and handling chemicals. I agree with that. So, and then if you go do it anyway, just because you're addicted to... Jumbo Jacks? <laughs> tacos. Super tacos. I see them in my sleep, so I might as well make some. <laughs> Can we move on? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, so the only, um, the only thing I made a change to in 2.8, it said um, approval may be denied if, in the opinion, it originally said of the supervisor or general manager. So to make it consistent with this section up here, I just changed general manager or department head. Yeah. Okay. So did we take out shall and we made a may? We made, That's a may right here. And then took off up to and including dismissal? Did you guys decide that? Yeah, do me just say Yeah, you may. can't really say a violation shall constitute sufficient grounds. May constitute grounds. I mean, so she was well, may, to may, you can still bring disciplinary action under may. So do may take out up to and Take out shall and put in may, yeah, that makes it softer. That's not what she's asking. Up to she and good hand is President Green. Yes. She's asking up to and including dismissal, included or lower no, it's I'm one of five. I'm only a tiebreaker. Uh, that was a recommendation to take that out. Is that do you have a consensus that you want to I, take out? I would like to see it removed. I'm but raise again, I'm one person. I agree. Let's move mm -hmm. on. <laughs> okay, consensus, yes, great, good. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to first one. Start two. <laughs> 2.9. Oh boy. 2.9. Nothing there. Nothing? No, that's uh, unconstructed thoughts. Sorry. Uh, Where did you go? 3.3. Okay, so I think a timekeeping section should be added. 
All non-exempt employees shall record, I guess it could be all employees shall record their hours worked on by time cards which are completed and turned into the employee supervisor at the end of each pay period. Time cards are used as a means to accurately record hours worked on calculating pay, regular time, vacation, sick leave, holidays, doctor's appointments, and all other absences from work shall be accurately entered to the employee's time card for accurate SMCSD record keeping. It is important that the employee's time card not be lost, falsified, mutilated. Is it, if there's a mistake on the time card, the employee should inform the, his or her supervisor and make, make and initial necessary corrections. Only an employee and his or her supervisor are permitted to enter information or otherwise mark the employee's time card. The supervisor should also initial any corrections. Time card 